Hello and welcome to The Banker. I'm Sylvia Pavoni, Economics Editor, and I'm talking to John Everington, our Middle East and Africa Editor. Welcome, John. Hi there, Sylvia. You've recently written about developments in the oil markets. We know that in April, oil kind of went off the charts with the uh, Brent's um, international benchmark price dropping below $20 per barrel for the first time in 18 years. We even had the price for US oil, the West Texas Intermediate contract, which went even further below zero in just one day for the first time ever. Analysts are expecting exploration and production oil companies to lose uh, around one trillion uh, in revenues this year. So the picture uh, was pretty dire. Bring us up to speed. Where are we now? And uh, what does the oil price drop mean for the major oil producing and exporting uh, countries around the world? We did have that big shock, uh, which really sort of hit its kind of nadir at the end of April, as you were saying. Things have improved somewhat now. Looking online at the moment, it seems if Brent has recovered somewhat, it's hovering just underneath the $35 a barrel um, mark. So that's a marked improvement from where we were only a few weeks ago. That being said, this is still very, very much below what we saw earlier on in the year, around about $68 at the start of the year. And a number of countries, a number of oil producing countries have had to really go back to the drawing board and do their sums and just see what this means for national budgets uh, for this year and for the next year. And a number of countries are going to find themselves in serious trouble uh, this year and, and, and or are already actually. So take us through the, the ones that are set to lose the most. And of course, we, we all can figure out uh, who may be at the top. Give us a few details about the ones that are really going to suffer because of this this year. Particularly Saudi Arabia and Russia as uh, two of the, uh, the world's largest producers are, of course, going to suffer. It's been interesting to see the approaches of Saudi Arabia and Russia over the past few years um, since the last oil crisis hit in, in 2014. On the one hand, diversifying in terms of Saudi Arabia trying to diversify away from oil, and also Russia imposing a lot more fiscal and monetary discipline, trying to sort of protect its economy from the shock that it experienced in 2014. That being said, both countries are in quite a state um, here in 2020. Saudi Arabia's had to make some pretty, pretty deep cuts to its economic spending, which had been cut back already. It's had to increase VAT um, quite significantly and has cut some state subsidies as well. Russia, in a slightly better place, although it's all relative, the decreases uh, that come from oil are also met by the COVID-19 lockdown measures. So while Russia is in a better position from last time, it still is in, in, in quite a state. And then when you go on to the countries that are really affected, you come to countries uh, particularly such as Ecuador, which has already had to uh, secure a sort of a standstill from its creditors in terms of its debt payments. It's it's negotiated a sort of a, pa a payment freeze for the moment. Its economy was in a, in a difficult situation before this happened, but then the plunge in oil prices was the straw that broke the camel's back. Particularly within Africa, you've got some very highly resource dependent countries and economies which are really going to suffer this year. Um, Angola was having a very difficult time at the start of this year anyway. Its economy was in a really frozen state, uh, facing a number of difficulties in restructurings. This is actually going to just increase many times over because of the collapse in oil revenues, the further collapse in oil revenues, should we say, uh, which has resulted from this. And then also Nigeria, the largest economy in Africa, which um, has already pleaded with its creditors either for a delay in payments or indeed, the president has come out and said um, some of these debts should be forgiven. It's quite a situation for, for those two countries in particular and quite, and quite a few others. So a pretty dire first half of the year. How will the second half look like? We're at a very interesting phase at the midway part of the year. It seems as if the momentum is starting to sort of shift somewhat with the coronavirus uh, spread. It has been under control uh, within Europe and in other economies when the lockdowns are starting to be eased. This points to a sort of an increase in economic growth and economic demand. It's going to be a slow affair. Uh, S&P are only forecasting a return to about $50 a barrel next year and 55 in 2022. So there is going to be a recovery and, and the price is going to tick up and those revenues are going to flow through. But at the same time, there has been quite a hit to economies. There is going to have to be a lot of restructuring going forward, I think. Still quite a lot of hardship uh, coming for 2020 and potentially 2021 as well. Thank you for your comments, John. Thank you.